Welcome back once again. Always a pleasure to see our next guest. Uh, he's back again presenting his second film in his trilogy. This one is called It Is Fine, Everything Is Fine, but you can also see his first film called What Is It as well. That's right, and also the big slideshow. Yeah. Crispin Glover, how are you? Good, good. Welcome Thank back. Nice to see you, Chris. Having having me on again. No problem. Glad to be here. Uh, you're jamming a lot into, uh, into yes. this weekend. This is, yeah. a, this yeah. is a lot of presentation for you. Yeah, it's true. Each, each uh, uh, evening is a four-hour plus show, and they're they're different shows as well. So tomorrow or tonight, I'll be uh, presenting "It Is Fine, Everything Is Fine," which is part two of what will eventually be a trilogy. Yeah. I'll be performing uh, what's called Crispin Hellion Glover's Big Slideshow Part One, which is a <laughs> presentation of eight different books that are profusely <laughs> illustrated. They really and I, are. And I dramatically narrate these uh, these different books which uh, are, are presented as slides behind me. Uh, it's an hour-long show. You've been doing the slideshow for, for yeah. a number of years now. Yeah, since 1993, off and on. For the part one, I've I have a part two, which I'll be performing on Sunday before everything is fine again. And then on Saturday, I'll perform Crispin Helen Glover's big slideshow part one <laughs> before Go what to is it? Go <laughs> to get all of yeah. that. Well, yeah, Crispin, it's a you confusing. do a Q&A. You yeah. sign all the books. You sell yes. all the books. So yeah. Why do you do this? Because you've been touring this literally all over the world. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, some of it's financial. I, I, I actually think it's the best way for me to sell these films. Uh, the, the part two of the trilogy, the one that is, I presented. What is it last time? Yeah. And this is the first time I'm showing it here. This film is. Uh, when the whole trilogy is done, this film will be the best film in the trilogy. But not only that, I feel like it'll be the best film I'll have anything to do with my whole career. Now tell us about the films, because they've kind of got an arc all together. Yeah. But uh, tell us about your idea behind the trilogy. Steve, well, Steve well I'll, let me talk about Everything is Fine first, because uh, it, it, was, it was actually written a long time before the other films came into being. Uh, I wrote Stephen C. Stewart, I think we have a clip, yeah. uh, playing. He, he'd been, I wrote him into What Is It in order to make Make his screenplay, which he'd written, uh, into a sequel of sorts, although it exists completely as its own uh, movie. Steve uh, was, is the main actor in the film. He wrote it. He was born with a severe case of cerebral palsy, and uh, he was difficult to understand. He'd been locked into a nursing home when his mother died in his early 20s, and he desperately w did not want to be there. The people that were taking care of him uh, would derisively call him an MR, a mental retard, which is not a nice thing to say and to this anybody. Was in the 70s? Yeah, in the 70s. And, and uh, uh, Steve was of normal intelligence. Uh, and like I say, it's not a nice thing to say to anybody, but the emotional turmoil oh, he must have gone the through. The frustration, I, the yeah, anger. I, it must I, have been I, like him being in, in this prison inside I, I, himself. I, 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 would, I would assume. I mean, there are certain things I never specifically asked him, yeah. but when he got out, he wrote this screenplay. And it was written kind of in the style of like a, a, a U.S. 1970s TV murder mystery movie of the week, a very specific writing style wherein he's the bad guy. And there's something about the fact that he wrote it in this genre style as opposed to a standard autobiography. Yeah. There's a dynamic that happens that the truths of his own life become even more uh, specific, and it's just, it's a beautiful screenplay. And as soon as I read it, I read it in 1986, uh, or seven, and as soon as I read it, I knew this would be something that I would have to personally finance well, and, 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 and produce. To see and to, to watch this, it's it's challenging uh, in its intellect, it's challenging in its visuals. I mean, yeah. you know, it's that kind of film that, that regardless of who you are, you're gonna have moments where it asks a lot of questions. Oh yeah, yeah, and that's with. that's something that I, what is it set up? The which the, mm -hmm. which yeah. I came on with last time, which was my psychological reaction to the corporate constraints that have happened within the last thirty years or so, where in anything that can possibly make an audience and uncomfortable. And we're looking at that a little bit of that oh, one yeah. now. That's that's clips from that, yeah. and and uh, that dead. anything that can no, necessarily can make an dead. audience uncomfortable is. Uh, excised, or the film will not be yeah. corporately financed Does or distributed. Make you well, you've got to protect people, Kristen. <laughs> well, well, sure. I mean, uh, I, I'm ultimately a normal uh, person <laughs> that becomes discomforted by the same things everybody becomes discomforted by. But I do think it's important, and I don't think it's the only way for questions to be asked. But particularly, what is it was something where I felt the, the reason to deal with the taboo was not because taboo is important, but it's because it isn't important. 
important. It's something that, and, that, and that's the blockade that's happening where we can't go into a universe of ideas because there are certain things that are not uh, yeah. supposed to be dealt with. And I just, I, I wanted to make sure by the time we got into the beauty of, of Steve's screenplay of his film that People the taboos are not what yeah. was the, the, the concern. I wanted that to be gotten out of, out of the way with what is it. <laughs> and, uh, and in a certain way, that's worked. You got way, it that's out of the way. Yeah. Uh, what <laughs> kind of discussions yeah. come up at your Q&As after people see these movies? Because you <laughs> tour these intentionally without them being on DVD. They're not right. released on the internet. That's right. It's the first time people visually get the whole yes. thing in front of them. So what kind of discussions unfold? Well, well, the, the, two, the films are very different types of movies. Uh, uh, they, they both do deal with certain taboo elements, but this Steve's film is there's an emotional catharsis that happens with his character and there's an uh, empathy and uh, there's a more universal feeling that uh, it's easier for me to go out in front of the audience after Steve's film <laughs> than what, what is it? Is it? What, what is it people <laughs> can get? I mean, people can even get well, upset about Well, and because it. it's personal, too, right? I mean, it's it's sort of, it's well, a little more, whereas they're Steven... Bo they're both they're both personal, but but I, I even though I Steve wrote Everything is Fine, That's I co-directed it, I co-edited it, I, I, yeah. I'm distributing it, but I feel equally possessive to Everything is Fine as I do to, to What is it? And and um, uh, it's just, I, I regard the emotional uh, cathartic element of that on a very high level. Yeah. So that's why I'm very proud of what is it as well, but, but, but they're very different kinds of films. And when I step out in front of the audience after what is it, it's always a bit more of a, a difficult Q&A yeah. session. But, you know, people, people can get, uh, con have concerns about everything is fine as well. It's not that there isn't anything, like I say, that's taboo in it, but there's just, the, it's because uh, of the emotional catharsis yeah. with Stephen Now, since we last saw you, you've done Hot Tub Time Machine, yeah. uh, you've done uh, Alice, Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is that how you finance the, your love of making your yes, own movies? Yes, absolutely. And, and it was specifically with the Stephen C. Stewart film, Steve, one of Steve's lungs collapsed in 1999. And uh, it, it's cerebral palsy, not degenerative, but he was getting older. Yeah. And it became apparent if we didn't shoot something soon, we may never get to shoot anything at all. It was right at that time that the first Charlie's Angels movie was coming to me. And I realized with the f m money that I made from that film, I could put it straight into this uh, Steve's film, and that's exactly what happened. And and you know, previous to that, I'd been very selective about finding films after Back to the Future yeah. came out that somehow psychologically represented what my interests were. Yeah. And but that that's difficult. Not in Hollywood. Hollywood. <laughs> it, it's impossible. It's impossible. And, and it was it was wrong for me to think that way yeah. about it. After after Charlie's Angels came out, and I'd funded the Steve Stewart film uh, with it, and that film did well. I, and that was good for my acting career. I realized I have to. The I two have can to, go hand in hand. Yes, I, and and it's made me more grateful to work within the corporate uh, film industry, yeah. knowing that 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 uh, doing that enables me to do uh, to finance my yeah. films and uh, be able to tour with these things that I'm well, so and passionate it about. It almost in, in a really interesting way goes back to that idea of taboo, right? <laughs> you know, working in mainstream was almost a taboo for you to to uh, sort of do those films and be at peace with for, it. For me. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe so. I hadn't thought of it that way. But, but, uh, but I uh, no, it's it's made it so I'm much more grateful for it, and yeah. I'm 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 in, enjoying it more. And I I've had a really good time working on things like both uh, Alice in Wonderland, Hot Tub Hot Time. Hot Tub Time. Well, people they're, love they're watching you. Crispin? In fact, we shot that here. I yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Crispin, thank you. It's thank always you. a pleasure to see you, and yeah. uh, thank you for making these films. Okay, yeah, so well, here's the thing: thing. Uh, Crispin Glover will be in person yep. uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at Pacific Cinema Tech. There will be a Q&A session following each screening and a book signing. And yes, he does sometimes stay till 4 a.m. to make sure you <laughs> all yeah. get he your book signed. the questions. And the books are on sale in the lobby at, at the theater, so you can purchase them there and go enjoy the films. Crispin, thank you. Yeah, Crispin, and CrispinGlover.com is a good place for people to know as I continue. Excellent. Just in case we confused yes. them in the beginning. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Thanks,